Police Commissioner Richard T. Fink and City Attorney Carlos De La Guerra. Item number one on the agenda, commission comments. Commissioners? Okay. Item number two. Item. Right. Sorry. Item number two on the agenda, the report of the police of Ch police chief Beck. Morning, chief. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, today we gave a, uh, a total of uh, 98 25 year pins to uh, members of the Los Angeles Police Department who cel celebrated their 25th anniversary with the organization. Uh, well attended. Uh, appreciate uh, Commissioner Figueroa being there. Yesterday we had a, an event at our uh, um, Evox Center for the for media members of the media. We had uh, over uh, 30 members of the media there that uh, not only went through the FAT simulator, which I know many of the commissioners have been through, but also some of the driving scenarios. So it was uh, a good time for them to learn about training of Los Angeles police officers. My report on crime: uh, we are uh, at 57 homicides year to date, as compared to 61 last year. That's about a 7% decrease. Uh, total Part One crime. 14.4% uh, increase. Uh, that, uh, while that is significant, uh, this is the first week that I report a decline from last week. So we're at 15.2 last week and we're at 14.4 this week. So that's a significant improvement. Uh, traffic, uh, I'll be really quick on this, but I wanted to highlight the, uh, the uh, reason for fatalities in, uh, in the city of Los Angeles. We've had 42 traffic fatalities so far this year to date. 25 of them involve pedestrians. So the, obviously pedestrian uh, violations are the vast majority of, uh, of uh, fatal traffic actions in the city of Los Angeles. We have uh, 9,859 sworn personnel on payroll and 36 recruits in, recruits in the academy. That puts us at uh, 99, 95, 27, 20 civilian personnel, uh, 400 uh, reserve officers, 371 specialist volunteers and 6,081 cadets, and that concludes my report. Great. Uh, Chief, I was at the uh, Dodger game for a couple innings um, yes. yesterday, and it was great. It was a great experience uh, um, inside the Four Corners and, and, uh, and outside as well, and obviously you, um, you, could, you could see the, see the presence. How, um, what were, were, were there any uh, There were no, any sig incidents? no significant incidents. Uh, obviously, we tried to set the tone in the first game. Uh, the, the heavy uh, uh, police deployment that you saw is is uh, is typical of the of the first games and then of our of our high incident related games like a Do like a Dodgers Giants game. Uh, and, you know we will reduce our uh, our footprint uh, during the normal season. It was a great crowd and the interaction between the officers and the fans was really uh, was great as people were walking in and leaving and even during the game. Too. And, the and I believe the Dodgers job. won. They that helped. We have three public comment cards on this item. As stated on the agenda, members of the public are invited to address the commission on any item on the agenda specific to that item. Members of the public are also invited to address the commission on any matter within the subject matter jurisdiction of, that, of the commission during public comment period, which is item number nine. The commission has allowed for two minutes to speak per individual per item. The first speaker for item number two is Robin Hood. Do they have to give real names? Is, are there any rules about any of this stuff? Okay, they do not. Okay. Welcome, Robin Hood. <laughs> so scornful this morning, but good morning, Steve Sobroff. Why are judges required to comport themselves in the accordance with code of judicial ethics by upholding the law. Well, Mr. City Attorney, I am on item two, report of the Chief of Police. And for the matter of subject, there have been multiple incidents of deaths due to vehicle hit and runs. That's why we are the hit and run capital of the world. But to some people in this commission, life and death has no, no meaning here. That's why Batman couldn't show up and replace me. But Batman has a good point in the business of the city. And that's to protect the rights of citizens and himself from the danger and crimes throughout the city of Los Angeles. All of you are aware 
You hear the reports. You read the paper. How we caught our officer who ran off across the border? Treason. This is treason, Mr. Sobrov. And we must take care. Angelinos and the residents here in Los Angeles, look at the public's interest here today. Full capacity. But yet, crime and death is on a mojo rise. So, in order for rules by the judges, we must ask our courts, is this dignified and courteous that our Brown Act rights are violated here in the police commission? Do we look like threats to you because I wear a hood? Does it make me what? And that's the point. There should be no segregation for a man in a hood. There should be no segregation anywhere in Los Angeles. We're all equal. My African-American neighbors, my Asian-Americans neighbors, and any one of you wish to be my neighbor because that's why I love America, because of the Brown Act and the hindrance by the mayor, Eric Garcetti, for the record, who has not listened and done much nothing for crime okay, in the Mr. city Hood, of Los you. Angeles. And Next. I still had three seconds before you cut me off. Next. Mr. Prentice Jenkins. Yes, this is about the significant incidents. Uh, there's an incident out here at the desk with uh, Officer Viegos. I came in and he, uh, I, I did what I always do for the last four weeks, put my stuff in the, in the uh, thing to get it searched, and he got all antsy about it. And I said, uh, he asked me what I was here for, for the Board of Police Commissioners. Had my stuff in there. He refused to search it. See, that's where the incident start. Little stuff like that. Cops know how to start little stuff. I want to start some stuff with this guy. So I won't search his stuff. And they're not letting anybody in, so I won't search his stuff until they let people in. That shit, just a cop at the desk. It started at the desk today. And you want to know why people hate cops. I don't think people hate cops. I think people hate people who act like ninth graders with police uniforms on. I don't know what it was. Maybe he was attracted to me. I don't know. Then he came out from a desk and took a defensive position. <laughs> what was that about? I've been telling you, you have gay cops in your, in your, in your ranks. And I can prove that you ha have gay cops in your ranks. This gentleman right, this gentleman right here. Uh, LAP, LAPD Sergeant Jim Parker, the openly gay cop. I told you you had gay cops on the down low. I don't have a problem with police being being gay and, 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 and being employed in the police department. I applaud this gentleman right here. He's out of the closet. I'm, I'm concerned about the ones that are in the closet that, that searching brothers and grabbing their penises. I know you don't like it. I know you hate it. But the second, you, this, this black woman right here, her grandson gets slammed on the ground. Guess what she does? She's, up, she's outraged. Now her, it's her son. When it comes to your door, that's when you ain't sh bowing your head and stuff like that. You should be ashamed of yourself, really. As a black woman, you should be ashamed of yourself. Bowing your head every time you know I tell you. Okay, you're done. Next. Mr. Ted Hayes. This is police. Morning, Mr. Hayes. I'm interested that you're giving a, a preview of the Brown Act regulations for speaking. But what's most important about the Brown Act is the criminal aspects of it. And guess what? They only apply to the board members. And it's so onerous, it says that any member who attends, just means sitting there on a the dais of a meeting where there's a violation of the Brown Act, is guilty of a misdemeanor. Now, you're supposed to be given a copy of the Brown Act when you become a member of, the, of any commission in the city of L.A., whether you got your copy or not, it's not important. Ignorance of the law has never been an excuse for violating it. Uh, oh, incidentally, relative to what the gentleman was saying, Robert Mapletroff, a photographer, is going to have an exhibit. Very interesting photography. <laughs> but my concern, Chief, is deployment. I believe there should be a information on deployment. At one time, deployment in the city was relegated to the area where there was the highest 
real estate value. So then at the places where the real estate was low, no cops. So now we understand there are cops deployed on Skid Row, safer city, safe city, whatever you call it, 50 of them. But at one time we found out out of the 10,000 a, a man force, person force, only 600 were on the streets at one time. Considering the newspaper reports about the number of officers who are ill, injured, off, and that sort of thing, we know, need to know how many guys were on the front line in those black and whites out on the streets. So it would be interesting to get a deployment figure from the chief each time he announces the number of officers we have, how many are fully engaged on the streets and protecting the public. Thank you, sir. M. Hunt. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to talk about it again. Me being arrested 69 times at Venice Beach, Chief Beck not doing anything about it. I think he's a sniveling coward. He comes out and says on his report when he comes to the mayor's office, oh, I'm not going to knick-knack, patty-whack, give yourself a bone. But he does just the opposite. Chief Beck, how many times can you arrest me? How many times can you take my stuff? How many times can you cause me not to work? But you don't give a damn about that, you know. But that's because I'm African American. That's because I'm a Ninth Circuit winner. How many times have I been down here on this same cause? I got a seller's permit. You have to turn around because I got you. See, you can't look at me. You should retire, Chief Beck. You've been here too long. When everything, when somebody come in here and you can't look at them because you know your department has treated them wrong and unfairly, and it's been proven not only in the district court but in the Ninth Circuit Court, you'll never make it here, Chief Beck. I'm going to be here every day. I'm going to be on your ass, and I'm going back to work. Eventually, I'm going back to work. And it's the same thing 10 years ago that, that you guys tried to do to me 10 years ago. If you look at Bird Seed Arrest on YouTube, you'll find the most humiliating arrest in <clears throat> LAPD's history. You can go to YouTube, go to Bird Seed Arrest, and watch how LAPD arrested me. You're a disgrace to the department. Item number three on the agenda, the report of the executive director, Mr. Tifang. Morning, Mr. President, members of the commission, uh, no report today. We have two public comment speakers on this. Mr. Herman. Who else? M. Hunt. Okay. Mr. Tifang, I'd like to... Uh, once again, congratulate you and thank you for all the calendar events that you've uh, provided the public. Such situations um, give us transparency and without the uh, scrupulous remarks by certain individuals who don't understand our Brown Act rights, 54,950 to 54,963, Ralph M. Brown versus Sacramento. On behalf of the public, all of you, all of we, so again, um, Mr. T. Fank, um, keep up the, the great work, hold the integrity and the law to the standards of reverence for law, integrity in all we say and do, and respect for people, even if we're a little different. Have a good morning, sir. Thank you. Go Dodgers. Hoorah. M. Hunt. All right, T. Fank, you've been here with me. Ever since we left the uh, building over there, um, the old police commission, you know better. You know what to do. You're a, man of in, you, you are a man of integrity, so start using it. Get on the ball. Get me back to work and get me out of city hall and city council. Thank you. Item number four on the agenda, the report of the inspector general, Mr. Bustamante. Uh, thank you, commissioners. No comment today. We have four public comment speakers. Uh, the first one is Prentice Jenkins. My 
to read something here. It says, uh, says, I have, a, I, have, I have an obsession with the unattainable. And I must, wait a minute, this only says 22 seconds. It's going up. You're fine. Uh, I have an, an obsession with the unattainable. I must eliminate the unattainable. Those infamous words were from Robert Bardo, who shot to death Rebecca Schaefer, her stalker. She did not know him had never seen him. He knocked on her door. She opened the door. He put two hollow points in it. This woman had never seen this man before. As I continue to tell you, you have a problem in the Los Angeles Police Department. Gay cops being obsessed with black men, straight black men. Got a problem with it. And Chief Beck, I just gave you those two. I don't know if the officer gave them to you. I want you to, I, I'm asking you to uh, investigate the Los Angeles Police Department Air Cavalry Unit. The, 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 the down low homosexual cops in that who like to fly over men's houses, straight men's places, and vibrate their houses with the roto blades. I suspect you know you have a problem. It, it's impossible for you not to know you have a problem. I suspect you just can't do anything about it because it's just too many of them. Personally, I like you, but the reality is you can't do anything about it. The, you, you've lost control of your department. When, when, when psychotic cops fall in love with straight men, we follow them around town, when freaking uh, firemen run up and down the street and they're fire, it, a, a hook and ladder, it costs $3,500 to take that thing out. Next. Robin Hood. Next. Before, let him, somebody else go and then he can, he's walking around. M. Hunt. We are an item. Oh, your clock is off a little. So uh, would you please uh, reset? You're going up. It's going up to two minutes. Okay, ma'am. What number are we on since I lost track? <laughs> item number four. The Inspector, Inspector General, who I find conflict of interest, sitting near the chief of police. Don't you find that offensive? Because the Brown Act would say it, it could possibly be a conflict of interest, Mr. City Attorney, on that end. However, and incidentally, I still have an IA open regarding LAPD Sergeant of Arms at City Hall who insult, who assaulted, again, assaulted me at City Hall along with Mr. Peppa Pig, Paul Coretz. And I demand an action that this is a crime, assault to an individual, Mr. Bustamante, and you have the authority to investigate. So I ask and petition all you commissioners that if this can only happen to an individual like myself, Robin Hood, think of the millions of Angelinos who constantly are assaulted on our streets, like our, po our poor old friend, Africa, who does have a name, which I won't mention. And I'm sure Miss Madison's heart goes out towards him because she was gone for a couple of weeks, but that's off subject, irrelevant. So, Mr. Bustamante, again, utilize the tools, the equipment, the resources to investigate the issues of police brutality in the city of Los Angeles. There must be transparency. Crime is up. Violence is up. The war on corruption in L.A. is becoming the next Chicago of old. So you must do something on behalf of the public. I'm here representing the public. There's not much I can do but iterate Next. the facts. Thank you. That was Mr. Herman. Now is Michael Hunt. Inspector General. I remember my Inspector General was here, Andre Barra. He got down there and investigated everything on the boardwalk. He did an excellent job. I think he got promoted to like a justice or a judge. 
He came from my uh, godfather, which was a head public defender. He came from the head public defender's office. He made a good inspector general. He had the people's best interests. What do you have? I have never seen you down there investigating at Venice Beach. Just to say that some people have true justice in their heart. Some people know knows better, and some people like to keep uh, Los Angeles image up and not to have it down. Now, Chief Charlie Beck doesn't have that respect for African Americans. Do you? Andre Barack was the best inspector general ever. Item number five consists of information items, filed items relative to noise variance and special event permits submitted for the period ending April 3rd, 2015. We have two public speakers on this item, Michael Hunt and Robin Hood. Now, we're talking about noise variances here, if I'm on topic and correct. Uh, submitted for the period ending of uh, April 2015. I see here LEDWP, Southwest Pipelines, uh, AT&T, right-of-way. By the way, the right-of-way, $1.4 billion that the city of Los Angeles must repair and fix the altered streets that have been corroding for the last 50 years that we, the taxpayers, have paid for off subject. Let me go back on subject now. So my point in case about noise variance permits is this. There was a time individuals on the Venice Beach boardwalk were considered making too much noise, and they were given multiple tickets, numerous tickets, and some were even detained and arrested. The winnings go to those who exploit the injustice of noise variances. Because again, a public beach is a public right away. And we, the public, have every right away to use and accommodate the space that our federal government has provided us. Thank you, DOJ. So I'm not gonna deliberate too long on this matter of subject because, again, the Venice Beach outlaws were outlawed from noise variances, and now they have their concern readdressed. Now they're back, entertaining, making us laugh, making us smile. And one day, Steve, I'd like to invite you out to the beach so we can have a corona and listen to the, to the sound of the roaring ocean move back and forth, <coughs> and the delight of people who make much noise and variance that I delight to. Thank you. That was Robin Hood. Next is Mr. Hunt. Just look at it this way. The noise ordinance. Venice Beach, feeding the birds. You two arrested for feeding the birds. Can you believe that? A bird arrest for making too much noise on Venice Beach. It's real. It happens to me. It happens to you. Discrimination is still real and in effect that we've all been discriminated against some way. Say, if you look at the bird seed arrest and you represent African Americans, you know what I'm talking about. It's on YouTube. Uh, I was making too much noise and they arrested me for feeding the birds. Could you believe that? Could you believe that, Charlie Beck? Could you believe that African Americans today are still being discriminated against and segregated against and equipment being stole by your Pacific Division because making too much noise? Could you believe that? This is what we call L.A. in the racism. For feeding the birds, your sergeant arrested me. Aren't you very proud? Thank you. Bye, go on. Item number six, presentations. Do we have any presentations? Not today. We have one comment speaker, Robin Hood. In presentations, we have an excellent way of giving 
are fine, rank and file, gifts, awards. And I never get the chance to be in the presentations to uh, honor them. And I thank all you officers and badges, those of you who protect our lives at Venice Beach, in the city of Los Angeles. You're, under, you're, you're, you're underscored for the excellent provisions of care you provide of our safety in the streets. So far, I have not become a casualty because the fine men in blue are always there for me. And so such presentations are admirable and honorable to those who deserve. And I will continue to pursue that 8% to be crunched into maybe a, a sooner aspect of your pay because again, if we can provide you certificates, medals, why can't we provide you a nice healthy check so you don't have to work so hard make mistakes, have adequate services, provisions of safety for your residents and your family, the ones you love so much. We all love family. My family, I love. <clears throat> and so a part of you is a part of me because my brother was in the U.S. Army. My family was in LAPD. My brother was in training up at the stadium in his heyday as a young man, trained by you fine officers. So what does it put us back to? Presentations. To all LAPD file and rank, congratulations on behalf of the public. You well deserve this applause. And thank you so much for everything you do for the public. Thank you. Item number seven, consent agenda items. These items are considered to be routine and non-controversial upon which the board is provided with adequate information for approval without inquiry or discussion. Item number 7A, relative to a travel authority for the Chief of Police for May 13th through May 15th to attend the 2015 National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Ceremonies in Washington, D.C. Mr. Chair? Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item number 8A, verbal presentation, an update from the Commanding Officer and Community Advisory Board from the Southwest area. Come on up. Any commissioners wish to pull either B or C on the agenda, you can move those before you take this item. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Gentlemen, for coming. Thank you for your patience. Good morning. Uh, distinguished Board of Police Commissioners, my name is Gerald Woodyard. I'm the uh, Commanding Officer of Southwest uh, Division. I have with me to my left uh, Leslie Evans. Um, he's a part of the CPAB as well as Johnny Raines. He's the um, co chair of the CPAB. Uh, Johnny Raines is going to talk briefly about um, the homeless um, issue in um, Southwest Division, and Leslie will talk briefly about blight in terms of our strategies going forward um, in those areas. I do want to talk about the diversity of our CPAP. Our CPAP is made up of not only diverse um, from African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, individuals from the LGBTQ um, community, but that is not just relegated to our CPAP. That's a part of our clergy. Um, that's a part of our, our business boosters. It's a part of um, everything that we're doing um, here in Southwest. Three minutes is up, buddy. <laughs> um, we're excited about some of the youth programs, and I'll talk briefly about those. Um, we do have um, eight um, youth programs uh, from cadets, um, the PAL program, Jeopardy Junior Cadets, youth landscaping program where we have youth come to the, the, the um, division and they actually landscape um, the area. Great. We have a youth board, a teen CPAP, as well as a Dorsey Police Academy program. So we're excited about that, and hopefully we can uh, move that um, a police academy to Crenshaw High School as well. Uh, one of the things that we're doing with our CPAB, as opposed to just meeting to meet, we've identified six committees that are designed to, and this, these committees were um, uh, adopted by the community, and, and those six committees are designed to actually have a goal. At the end of the year, we want to um, have a goal and, and see how far we, um, we've come in terms of, of those committees. And those committees are the recruitment committee, there's a training committee, 
a communications committee, a youth commu a committee, as well as a community engagement committee. Um, with that being said, I'll pass it over to my um, CPAP co-chair, Johnny Rains. Hey, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay. Um, the uh, project that we decided to work on this year with one of our goals was we picked a, a quality of life project in the Southwest community. And as a community, we talk a lot about quality of life issues. But I think one of the uh, areas that we often overlook is we look at homelessness as an impactor on our quality of life as we'll say people with homes. But we fail to very, we, we don't very often look at the quality of life of the homeless people. And that's what we adopted as a project, to look at the quality of life at, with its respect to homeless people. So to do the way we set it up, we've created a, a collaboration between CPAB, a neighborhood council, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Community Build, which is a nonprofit community organization, uh, NAMI, which is a national association for mental, mental uh, health training, and a couple of other organizations. We created a coalition to approach this issue and see how we could resolve it and see what impact we could have. We started out with a budget of about $15,000. 600 of that was actually contributed by community stakeholders within the Lamert Park Village and Lamert Park and Crenshaw Corridor area. The first step was to identify a cadre of six people who would be a team and get them trained on how to do outreach reach with regard to homeless people, what to look for, how to approach these folks. So we spent a week training them. The training was uh, conducted by a couple of different agent, national agencies that do training in that area. As with the six trainers who were male and female, and we also included uh, two gang intervention specialists to make sure everybody was safe and going out within the community. After the six weeks of training, they, I mean, the one week of training, they went out every morning from 6 to 11 just canvassing and interviewing homeless folks within the area. Hmm. They came up with and interviews added up to about 96 different individuals with different degrees of service needed. What our plan was is at the end of that activity, the, the six weeks of canvassing, was to bring all of the services that were identified by the homeless people as what they needed into one central location and to get those individuals all of the services that they needed. We ended up with, like I said, with 96 interviews that related to 72 people actually showing up on that final Friday. We had DPSS, Department of Mental Health, all of the agencies with regard to housing. We had vets, vet to vets involved. In fact, we found that like 20% of our 96 people that we contacted were actually veterans. 15 wow. of them were another group <clears throat> that we kind of often look over is uh, transitional age youth. Those youth who have aged out of foster care or just are runaways or who have just completed incarceration. They're a growing population of homeless as well. Those, that 15, we were able to get them all of the services that they needed. We had a tremendous amount of support from the mental, Department of Mental Health to get people into a case management situation so their needs could be taken care of. And probably the two most impactful, one gentleman who does a lot of community, he's a homeless individual, does a lot of cleanup in the Lemur Park Village area, but he had stopped receiving his general relief payment. Because we had DPSS there and the other organizations there, they were able to communicate that to him. Well, you stopped getting your checks because you didn't fill out Form 9. So he was able to walk from one table to another table to get that form completed, and he was able to start getting his general relief right there on the spot. <laughs> the other one that I really look at as, as a success is probably about the fourth week into the daily canvassing, a gentleman was uh, identified who had been in Los Angeles living on the streets for about eight years. Got him in touch with some mental health folks, got him some counseling, got him a caseworker, and we were able to find out that his home was really in a place, a small town called Chester, South Carolina. What we were able to accomplish with him was to get him cleaned up, get him clothing, get him a bus ticket. We got in contact with his family in South Carolina. And as, as of two Fridays ago, when we put him on the bus, I think it was a three-day ride. He's now living with his grandmother in South Carolina. Wonderful. I think that's the kind of successes that we look for. And we need to really look at approaching the homeless, act, the homeless in our communities as part of our communities. It's not going to go away. It's a problem that's only growing. 
but approach it from their standpoint of what can we do to help you? What is it you really need? What's stopping you from being able to, to enjoy life? What's impacting your quality of life? So that's the project we took on, and we're going to try to replicate that twice a year at least. Wonderful. Really wonderful. Okay, our other project is this monthly newsletter, which goes out by email to a list of about 360, which consists of building and safety inspectors, uh, homeless service agencies, community activists, uh, members of neighborhood councils, and a whole lot of neighborhood uh, activists of all kinds. Uh, it consisted originally of mainly blight properties, alleys needed cleaning. But what we discovered really was that as there was more work done downtown on Skid Row, that homeless were moving into our area. And starting about a year and a half ago, we shifted our focus onto about two-thirds homeless issues. And we had to change the layout and everything else to accommodate that. So that where originally we used to cover about eight or ten, you know, blight problems, we now are about two-thirds homeless camps. So what we did before to be on here for a blight location, nothing went here that wasn't an obvious code violation, and we would report it to building and safety. We would work those inspectors until we cleaned up the case and got a decision. So everything here had to be, in the end, cleaned up and, and closed. With the homeless, it's much harder. So we put a CPAB representative on Homeless Services Authority has a homeless coalition in South LA. We've got a, a CPAB representative on that coalition and we work with our homeless outreach teams to see uh, that they go out to these places. We go out every month and try and locate every single homeless camp in Southwest and photograph it. And we renew those photographs once a month so that what's in here is every known homeless camp that's, that's persistent. Uh, or if it moves, we try to find out where it went to and re-photograph it. And then this thing goes out to those homeless service agencies, the churches that do homeless outreach. <coughs> and of course, it's harder. Those camps don't go away as easily. But we work them, and we work with the homeless agencies. And it's not as quick or as easy as building and safety, but we do work that. Are they appreciative of what you're doing? Hmm? Are they appreciative? The homeless? No, 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 no. The, uh, the homeless the, the agencies. agencies. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. So they're working with you. And we were we were liaison. CPAB, Southwest CPAB was the liaison with South Bureau mm -hmm. between Homeless Services Authority for the big homeless count on January 29th. And yes, you better believe that Homeless Services Agency fell all over us about that liaison role that we played. Yeah, because there've been a big gap between. Yeah. Uh, homeless Services Authority and Police Department for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we helped uh, in a big way to try to reestablish some liaison there. And they were, you know, we got a big applause the meeting after that of uh, this, the, the big coalition for South LA. So, yeah, there's just two different approaches. Johnny is up close with, you know, a big group of homeless in the North Park area. And this is kind of a far back of a whole lot of homeless camps. But, you know, it's a very tough problem to yeah. deal with the homeless. And a lot of the homeless are extremely resistant to being helped. And there aren't enough resources. There's very little housing available. But we try to work both ends and do what we can. But yeah, CPAB in Southwest, homeless is a big issue for us. Invite me down. I want to come down with you guys. OK. okay. Do. This is really wonderful. Paul, Thank you for your time and your questions. Speak into the mic. Just facing you. Um, when you did your homeless count, what were the demographics, um, ethnicity, and gender of the, was it 96 people? They have not released the numbers yet. That's no, the, the one, oh, yeah, oh, I'm, John, sorry. Oh, Johnny, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. The, 90, the uh, demographics we have for by 56% uh, were adults between 27 and 55. 20% were 56 or older, and 24% were uh, transition age youth. Latino, we didn't, we didn't, African American. We didn't it's mixed. Track that. Is it mixed? Yeah, we didn't track the ethnicity because. For women and men. No, we okay. figured we were serving whoever was there. Okay. And we don't have. The, I can get you those those demographics, but that 
the, the, the number that, again, was surprising was the 24% were transition age youth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Chief, do you want to make a comment about this? It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it is, a, as you both know, a persistent problem all throughout the, the city of Los Angeles, and, and Southwest certainly has more than its share, but, but what you're doing is, is, really exactly, is exactly the right way to do it. You know, you have to, you have to not, you have to give people an incentive and then a pathway to go to services. I mean, you know, this is just a, this is, this is not a problem that will get solved just by um, uh, posting up availabilities. I mean, you have to casework each and every individual and and I, I'm thrilled to see this, the the CPAP taking that role you know we the our biggest challenge in in meeting the uh, the issue of homelessness is getting enough partnership from the resource side I mean I'll, I'll put as many cops as as I can get partners for in but it's just so difficult so so you filling that gap and doing the job of uh, service providers and actually the mental health services and 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 uh, the many of the county agencies is, is just great because that's the that's the missing piece. I mean, I'll, I'll, I will devote whatever resources I have to. to. Yeah, it's really great. I'm going to come down and see. I just made arrangements. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you guys for what you're doing for all you're doing. Good work. We have three public comment cards on this item. The first is Prentice Jenkins. The second is Tud Hayes and Mr. Herman. Captain Matthew Phillipson, behind trying to buy, buy seven balls of heroin. Battalion Chief Orville Fleming stabs his girlfriend to death. Off-duty police officer Brian Eric Gallagher whips it out in the park shakes at the kids 18 year old girl says she 17 year old girl says she has sex with a police officer nothing happens LAPD officer arrested and raped we know there's psychosis we know they're <clears throat> they're a pedophile cops this one just happened to get caught how long was he on the force I continue to tell you there are, you have psychosis in the police department you have psychosis sure. in the fire department sure. Your comments have to be on this topic. This topic, sir, is about regarding community initiative, problem solving, crime strategies. I'm right. giving at, you at, crime at strategies. This, at this particular division, this area. This area, yes. The one that they spoke it, about. Uh, let me ask you, is an LAPD officer still an LAPD officer anywhere? Yes or no? All right, so you can put my time back on there because you... No, no, no. You need to you need to keep your topic. Sir, all you had to do was let me go, topic. and I'd have been finished by now. Need to you keep you your guys don't like what I'm saying. That's your problem. I got I got videos. There he is. You just don't like what I'm saying, so you stop me and you you mess with my you mess with my time. Keep your comments on topic. The the comment is on topic. This is the comment on topic. You're talking about crime solving. That is a homosexual fireman running past my place with their lights. You see that floodlight? There's no reason for it to be on. It's only on <laughs> because they're obsessed with me. Like Robert Bardo was obsessed with Rebecca Schaefer. I'm straight. They're gay. I don't care about gay firemen. They have a right to be employed. They don't have a right to continue to stalk me. I have a video of the Los Angeles Police Department uh, uh, Air Cavalry Unit. This is them hitting my light, my place at almost 10 o'clock at night, obsessed with me. You get, I, I want them to come over to Chief Beck's house and hit that roller blade, see what happens to your house. 30, 40 times a day. These dudes do this 30, 40 times a day, trying to make you think that it's... Next. A Next, Mr. Hayes. Welcome, sir. I was on the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority Advisory Board for three years. I voluntarily slept in a tent on Skid Row for four weeks. I investigated every one of the homeless so, uh, services authorities' shelters for the winter uh, program. Reinventing the wheel is not necessary. That's what you seem to be doing here. I understand your intention, your goodwill, your knee-jerk reaction to help out. But let me ask you some questions about human beings who might be homeless. Are they bums? Are they hobos? Are they tramps? 
Are they vagabonds? Are they simply members of the wanderlust tribe? Human beings, unfortunately, some of them like to live outdoors. Some people call themselves gypsies, not the real gypsy, but that's their lifestyle, moving from one place to the other. And then, of course, we have the mentally incompetent and those who are too heavily on drugs. They can't get housing because they will not obey the housing rules. They don't like any kind of rules. Now, the unfortunate situation is that we reacted so strongly against the homeless, the only protection they could seek were the courts. And the courts have found time and time again the LAPD and everyone else was oppressing and violating the human rights of the homeless. Taking their property, throwing it away, doing all those kind of things. So there are two sides of the coin. Now, my reason for being on the homeless services, though, because there were so many, many black people who were homeless on Skid Row and throughout the city. It became to me a black problem, not a homeless problem. I suspect it's still pretty much predominantly the same way. But I don't think, actually, you're going to get rid of homelessness. If you build it, they will come. That means the latrines that they're putting up here and there, and that doesn't help. It just Thank exasperates you, the problem. Mr. Herman. So the subject of matter is to do with homelessness. I personally know it from the heart, Mr. City Attorney, because majority of persons under ADA Section 504 are mistreated by subsidized housing that the federal and state government provided all these provisions of making Los Angeles a great place to live, but at the same time, outsource all the homeless people by gentrification. One group of people so far, by Jose Weizar, who's now elected official five, five and a half years. And the continue of this burden, the pain, the war on homelessness is an issue of the mayor's staff who sits back here looking eye to eye at me. She knows better that Eric Garcetti, for the record, you have failed to provide housing for the homeless. You have failed to subsidize all the federal and state dollars that you begged Washington for to build and create an administration that would help the homeless population. And yet we still have 300 Hope, 1800 Washington, a community of homeless people on the streets right before our eyes on trade tech. Trade tech, a college. And we can't provide them a place to bathe, a place to eat, a place to go to school and learn and educate themselves far and beyond under the Brown Act, Mr. City Attorney. When the fine African-American, the first speaker was speaking, you violated his rights for two minutes, you interrupted him rather than just let him finish and then address it afterwards and saying, Dean Ferguson, P-R-E. Next. G-E-R-S-O-N said it. Stop violating our rights under the Brown Act, 54950. That's the final speaker for item 8A. For the record, item 8B was approved relative to the extension and budget modification of the 2012 solving cold, case, cold cases with DNA program. Item AC was approved relative to the reprogramming of funds for the 2012 forensic DNA backlog reduction program. We are now on item number nine, public comment. We have three public speakers, Robin Hood, M. Hunt, and Prentice Jenkins. Over off and back. Why are judges required to comport themselves in the accordance with code and judicial ethics to uphold the law and order? Because the rules say judges must be dignified and courteous, all behind confidential rebukes, avoid inappropriate conduct. Pervasive misconduct? Yes, misconduct that leads to what? Ticket fixing, accepting gifts, expensive gifts, lying to the commission and submitting false reports and inaccuracies. All a sanction for 
the reserve? No, persistent and pervasive misconduct. We must grow as a city in this large growing town of ours called Los Angeles. And we must acquire some homeless housing for those who are homeless using federal and state dollars. And although Mr. Beck doesn't appreciate us hoodies, white or red, we are here to represent all the interests of all Angelinos. So again, I say to the mayor's office back there, go back and sit down and come up with a plan with this commission to stop violating our rights under the Brown Act. And not only just the Brown Act, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of dress, representing my love, Los Angeles first, and the people of Los Angeles that need more of your concerns to address their issues. I am tired of hearing of the crimes. I'm tired of the war of corruption in the city of Los Angeles. Stop Michael Englander up there at City Hall from all of that, because he's a chump. M. Hunt. Yes, yes, I want to touch a little bit on the Brown Act. Although Dow versus the city of Los Angeles, they only won a dollar, but they actually won the case. They cost the city about $10 million with two high-profile attorneys. So the city loses all together. And they knew what they were talking about from City Hall to Venice Beach. They lose because we think that we know it all. <laughs> all of you guys up here are sitting on that panel. You guys should read Dean Pragerson's opinion in district court. And when he said Dow and them won, it was only a dollar because they was in it for the money. That's why they only got a dollar. But if you still respect the law in its entirety, then you would expect Hunt versus the city of Los Angeles, the right to due process, and my second case called Fuck White Niggers too, and they settled out for $215,000. Although you guys hate, hate the wordage, it's a true case, and that made me a double platinum, Ninth Circuit winner. Um, anyways, however you look at it, Chief, Beck, you could only violate the law so much, so many times before it hit you in the, you know what. And Chief McCartney and this Captain Grimes have put themselves on the line. I always give people a fair chance, so if you can, give me a call because Alberta, the captain of Pacific Division, said that I couldn't file no more complaints at the local level. So I tried to call you guys and find out if that was authentic. If that's not, please let me know then we can sit down and talk, but with Chief McCartney and Captain Grimes, Captain Alberca put you guys on the line, and pretty soon it's going to get sloppy and, and messy in here and things like that, and you'll find 10 KKK members up in here uh, from the Black Next. Clan. Prentice Jenkins, followed by Tut Hayes, the final speaker. There's an old saying in sales I used to be in, tell them. Tell them again, tell them, tell them again, and then tell them what you told them. Post-traumatic stress in the police and fire department is, is an epidemic. Post-traumatic stress changes your personality. If you were a good person, you become a bad person. If you were in the me, if you were in the women, now you're in the men. Even if you have a wife and child. The problem with, with this issue of post-traumatic stress and cops and firemen stalking people. The problem is not the police chief. The problem is the media. They won't investigate it. Fifty years ago, children were being molested by priests. Nobody believed priests were, were gay and were pedophiles. Not even the media investigated it. It took 50 years for the media to investigate it, and then the cops got involved. But parents were bringing their, their children to the police station, saying that these these men, these priests have molested their children. The media refused to get involved. It took 50 years. Once the media got involved, uh, priests started going to jail. It's not the cops that got involved. The cops did nothing about it. The media does it. The second you guys get involved, people will start going to jail. You, and if you, 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 you think you can laugh, I bet you wouldn't laugh if it was one of your children. 
I bet you wouldn't laugh if one of these women in here being stalked. The first thing she want is a restraining order. So I'm telling you right now, post-traumatic stress <coughs> is horrible. And it is an epidemic in the police and fire department. I got gay cops flying over my house in their helicopters. You know how much could it cost to, to use that helicopter? These are gay cops and gay firemen who are just like Robert Bardo, who shot Rebecca Schaefer, knocked on her door and shot her to death. I don't want to be riding my bicycle to the store one day and get accidentally get hit by a fire truck. Next. Ted Hayes. Well, I have a newspaper story about me on Brown Egg. Because I've arrested for violating the Brown Act by, <laughs> anyway, I got 265 days because I was speaking on public comment at the Community Redevelopment Agency, and James Wood didn't like it, he so gave me a private person's arrest, and I was sentenced to 265 days, but I got Wood at trial. I asked him, what was I talking about? Wood said, I have absolutely no idea. Uh-huh. So how could I be violating the c content of the subject? Anyway, if you can recognize that when public speakers come to you in their uniforms, in their garb, whatever, and you can recognize that they are criticizing your acts or your omission, they're not violating the Brown Act because the Brown Act states you cannot prohibit public criticism of your acts or omission when the public has a right to know what that person is saying. They have a right to know what their, you have, the public has a right to know what their complaints are. Even if they're enduring incessant complaints, they have a right to make that complaint. They have these two minutes of fame here at this podium, or 10 if they sign up 10 times, and you have to endure it. I guess the mayor didn't let you know about that, but look at the Brown Act. It'll let you know what the ground rules are. So I would hope that you will be patient. You don't have to smile. You don't have to laugh or even ignore these people, but they have a right to be here. Now, I consider them to be mostly aggrieved people who have the time to come here and complain. I've got time. I'm retired. And when people are aggrieved to the level that these people are, they're going to come back. They're going to complain about their lack of justice and a lack of fairness. So please abide with them. Thank you. Next. As the final speaker for the final speaker for public comment period, we are now on item number 10, closed session, and we have two public comment speakers, Robin Hood and M. Hunt. They both left the room. Okay, next. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item number 10A1 and 10A2 in accordance with government code. Five four nine five seven. I'm Jen Mahoney in Studio City. 
You're watching LA City View Channel 35, where you can get the best in culture and arts. It's our city, it's our channel. Hey, just go! Welcome to...